Okay. Uh, so the last May cartoon is actually the topic of, of what's on my mind this morning. I've been following this discussion about pegging Jamaica's exchange rate to the U.S. dollar as proposed by the TSOJ president Howard Mitchell a couple weeks ago, Mitchell being one of the characters cartoon today. And this is, it's such a cyclical discussion, you know? Every so often it comes right back around whenever the exchange rate gets too high and you have the same old tired arguments getting dusted off, as if the people making these arguments either don't remember or deliberately didn't hear any of the counter arguments. So first of all, I, t I seriously had to question whether Howard Mitchell had any clue what he was talking about because you guys only heard the news clips in the story. I wrote that story. I had to listen to the entire speech. And he kept using the terms fixed exchange rate and dollarization interchangeably. Now, those are two completely different things. So at one point, I was wondering, okay, which one is it that he's calling for? Because fixed exchange rate refers to pegging the Jamaican dollar to the U.S. dollar at a rate that is fixed, meaning it never changes. So mm -hmm. if the central bank decides that that rate is to be 125 so or 130, right, several countries to it, then that's what it's going to be today, tomorrow, next week, next year, unless and until they decide to change it. Dollarization, on the other hand, would be if we abandoned the Jamaican dollar entirely and started using only U.S. dollars as legal tender in Jamaica, so there'd be no more Jamaican dollars. So after listening to Mr. Mitchell's key points, I realized, okay, dollarization is not what he meant, even though that's what he kept saying interchangeably with fixed exchange rate. He wants the dollar pegged to the U.S., which can be done. I'm not saying it's impossible. Many countries have done it. You just cited uh, Cayman Islands. But it's not a panacea or a cure-all for the problems that we're facing now. In fact, it has its own set of problems. And I wonder if Mr. Mitchell is fully aware of these problems, what he's really asking for. It can be done successfully in a country like Cayman that's stable, you know, that's growing, and so on. Barbados has had its own experience too. Panama. Panama. But I come from a country also with a fixed exchange rate, Belize, yeah? I'm going to explain to you what that means, what it comes with, and what can go wrong in having a fixed exchange rate. So you know, you guys know I'm, I'm born and raised in Belize, lived there most of my life until I came to Jamaica in 2008. And so all my life up until then, I never knew another system other than fixed exchange rate. And so I just took it for granted that this is what it is. Now, all my life, the Belizean dollar has been pegged at a rate of two Belizean dollars to one US. And it's been a source of pride to say, okay, our dollar is strong. But how do we maintain that? I'll tell you how, through very tight foreign exchange controls. It's extremely difficult to get US dollars in Belize. If you're traveling and you want just say 500 US to travel with, you have to apply to either the Ministry of Finance or the Central Bank for permission to buy US. And once you get permission, it's a, a written document and you take that document to the bank there's still no guarantee that you're going to get the 500 US that you want. You might get some if you go early enough. Or what you do is if, if you have a friend at the bank, you say, listen, I'm coming, put up some for me because I need, you know, I'm traveling soon. So it's a challenge, which is why whenever friends or family are visiting from the States, you hurry up and call dibs on their US dollars. Because you say, let me change that for you. You have it in the U.S. <laughs> and you hold it until whatever time in the future. You don't even know when you may need it. The first time I ever experienced ease of getting U.S. dollars was when I came to Jamaica. I was astounded that you could simply walk into a cambio mm -hmm. and walk out five minutes later with U.S. dollars. I'd never experienced that before. A couple months ago, a colleague of mine from Belize was in Jamaica on business and he asked me to change some U.S. And I was, I was reluctant. I was like, oh, we don't really do that here. I said, you know, better go to a cambio. Because um, I don't know what the exchange rate's going to be tomorrow, next week. I might end up losing money doing that. And he didn't get why I didn't want to do it. Because in Belize, anyone would have jumped at the opportunity to get U.S. dollars. But these examples that I've been giving are... Uh, that I've been giving are personal and they're for small amounts. But imagine what it's like for merchants whose core business is importing and reselling. The difficulty accessing U.S. dollars also applies to them. 
the tight uh, controls on it. And yes, Belize has a decent tourism industry, and the country also earns U.S. dollars from agricultural exports and a small amount of oil, but it's not enough to sustain the demand, hence the very tight controls. So when businesses and individuals need U.S. dollars and they can't get it, what do they do? They turn to the black market. Mm -hmm. Yeah? What's the black market? For the most part, it's the drug trade. And those guys have lots of U.S. dollars, and they're eager to launder it. And this is a big reason Belize has been the poster child for de-risking, perhaps the worst hit country by that crisis. Now, de-risking listeners, if you've been following what's been going on the past few years, it refers to when these large international banks decide that they don't want to take the risk of doing business with the country's local banks because they fear that their anti-money laundering and terrorism financing, counter-terrorism financing efforts aren't strong enough. And in some instances, it's an unfair characterization. They're lumping everybody together as the one. At the height of the crisis in Belize, no correspondent bank in the world would do any business with any bank in Belize leaving the entire country cut off from international trade. And this is just recently, like two years ago. Now, they've since figured out a way to lessen that impact, and they've managed to convince at least one correspondent bank to do business with the Belizean banks. And this may sound, all of this that I'm describing may sound extreme, like worst case scenario, but it's very real. I've seen this happen up close and personal. Mm -hmm. I've seen the impact. So when Dr. Damien King responded on the show the morning he spoke about the kittens, making the point that while Jamaica, that what Jamaica has now might not be perfect, it's still better than the alternative, I agree with him because he made the point that although the price of U.S. dollars might change, at least it's available and you can make the decision whether to buy at that price or not. And the alternative is using a fixed exchange rate. It may not be available at all. And which is worse when you need it, buying at a high price or not being able to get it at all? And I've told you what not being able to get it at all legally leads to. That's a rabbit hole that you do not want to go down, especially with the latest trade stats showing that Jamaica continues to import more than it exports. And that trade deficit has actually widened. When we start producing more and become a net exporter and a net earner of foreign exchange, and perhaps that's a conversation that could be had about fixing the exchange rate. But right now, that could be opening a can of worms, and it's bound to create more problems than it solves. That's what's on my mind.